Can your Confluence chart pass the squint test? Hi, I'm Matt with K15T, and we're going to talk about how to beautifully visualize your table data in Confluence. So Confluence is a great place for bringing together mass amounts of numeric data, right? Like your sales numbers or your marketing campaign statistics or your customer demographics. Drop those all in a table on a Confluence page and it's great. Anybody can collaborate on it and add to it or look at it. While people like me look at it and say, well, that's a lot of numbers in a table, other people might look at it and see potentials for data insights. They'll look at it and say, I want to share these insights with the team. And you can do that by visualizing the data using a chart or a graph. In fact, before you even start creating a visualization from the data in your table, don't be like me and just say, well, I like colors and pie, so I guess I'll just make a pie chart and see what happens. Instead, think about the story you think the data is telling that you want to share with your team and the type of chart you will use and the way you'll visualize it will sort of follow. So let's look at a few different types of charts, the types of data you would visualize with each, some tips for making them exceptionally effective, and maybe we'll even see if they pass the squint test. Also, if you're as curious about Confluence as we are, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you find out as soon as we've learned something new that we want to share. So here's my Confluence page full of tables. All the information in the tables is accurate, but I have no idea what to do with them. Also, they're a bit boring to look at. So let's add a chart. I can do this by selecting the table I'm interested in and clicking that insert chart button. And I have a generic chart right here. Beautiful. Now, one thing that's super important for a great chart is it has to have a title. It cannot say untitled. It cannot be empty. People have to know what the chart is about. So make sure you add a title here at the top. Also, you can add a title to one or more axes in the chart so people know what the units are. This is typically pretty important so people know I'm talking about US dollars here. That's what these numbers represent. That's why we have to add titles. Also, let's talk about the legend for the chart. In some cases, you absolutely should have a legend so people know what are the different data series that you're looking at. In other cases like this one, I'm just looking at the sales of my different apps. And so I don't need to have a legend telling me these are apps because I already know that. So in that case, I'm going to hide the legend. So titles required, legend optional. So this is a really basic chart and that's great. But let's talk about the different charts we can use and the best ways to use them. The first type of chart we're going to look at is the bar chart, which is absolutely fantastic for comparing several different values. Like in this case, where I'm looking at the usage of the different plans we offer for our apps. There are a few different things we can do to really make sure these types of charts are clear to the people looking at them. One is while they do start in upright columns, we might actually want to rotate them. This is a particularly good idea if the labels in the legend are long. In fact, you should move the legend to the left because this is a left right reading chart and so people can very quickly read the legend and the bars. Also, this often works well with a smaller plot area because you really don't need that much room to communicate the same information. Another thing to notice here is the range is sort of blown out of proportion by the number of enterprise users we have here. Yes, I can see that we clearly have more enterprise users than any other plan. What I don't know is how many people are using the other three plans. That part of the range is just too vague for me to truly understand. So a great practice here is to actually add another chart by just copying this one and removing the enterprise data series. And now I can see the other three plans compared with a much more accurate range. So I actually know what the numbers look like. So while we're talking about this, let's talk about the types of colors we should use based on the type of data that we're analyzing. And yes, that actually matters for people's brains. In this example, the data series are definitely ordered. So free, basic, standard, and enterprise. But there's no true metric between them. They're just sort of like small, medium, and large. So we want to use color to help people understand they're definitely in an order, but they're not directly, directly related to each other. What we want to use are perceptually ordered colors. That is colors that anybody's brain, no matter where they grew up, can naturally put in an order. In this case, we're going to use a heated body scale, which would typically start with black. I'm starting with a dark red and move to a lighter red, to an orange, to a light yellow. You can see they're in an order, but also your brain tells you these things aren't related because they're different colors. Also notice that we use the same colors for the free basic and standard plan so we can help people see that they are in fact looking at the same data in each chart. Color me impressed. 
Another flavor of the bar chart is the grouped column or bar chart, which are great for side-by-side -side comparisons of very specific values. You can use all the same bar chart best practices on group charts, but one additional thing you should keep in mind is to limit the number of values you're comparing. Here I'm comparing four values, which is almost a bit of a stretch. I would not go beyond that. Often, comparing just two values can be very effective. Also, you'll notice that in this chart, not only is this data ordered, but also it has a shared metric that is age. So in this situation, you wanna use multiple shades of the same color. And again, you can see it's perceptually ordered because the brain just says, oh yes, light blue to dark blue. You could also do dark blue to light blue. Anybody's brain is gonna see that and understand the order of that data right away. There is one more stop on our bar chart hop, and that is to talk about data aggregation. So there may be an instance where you have a very large table that has multiple duplicate values in it that you wanna visualize. So in this case, I have a table full of all the transactions for all of our apps. Now, I don't wanna see a chart that shows every transaction for my app that would be hard to look at. What I would like to see is all of the transactions grouped together or aggregated based on the app so I can see in total how much money did we make for each. And that's where aggregation is super helpful. So now we're gonna jump from the bar to the bakery and talk a little bit about pie charts. So pie charts easily show the values that make up a single whole. And this is super valuable for looking at the percentages of things. So here's a look at our monthly sales by region. And it's amazing how effective this simple circle can be. But there's a few things we can do to keep our pie charts particularly clear. One is to make sure the legend is kept directly attached to the slices. I can very clearly tell here which data series is which and the percentage that each one of those represents. Also, if you have several data series that amount to a very small slice, like maybe you have many slices that are 1% or sub 1%, group those together in your table as one item because a pie chart that has many, many small slices is very difficult or impossible to read. Also, just looking at color, here's an example of data series that are completely distinct from each other. They are not related in any way. So we're using universally distinct colors, that is red, yellow, green, and blue, to make sure no one's brains think they are related in any way. So let's get our minds off pie for just a minute and try to focus on line charts. Line charts are super popular in business, especially looking at trends over time. And they're great because we can actually compare different categories and the trends for each to see if we can understand what are the differences and how might they be interrelated. And of course, there are best practices we can use for line charts. One of those being don't have more than six data series or six colored lines on the chart at one time. It will be impossible to read. In fact, six might be pushing it. You could also clarify it by actually making the chart wider, especially if you're looking at a very long period of time to evaluate your trend. Also, you could potentially break a busy chart into multiple charts if you don't really want to evaluate the relationships between the different trends and more just each trend individually. And of course, we have to talk about the importance of color. So if you want to show your teammates how the different trends interrelate, you probably wanna have them on the same chart in different colors so people can clearly see the different lines. But perhaps you've noticed that there's a huge variance in the sale of YZAP, which is one of the trends that I'm showing here. So really the story you wanna tell is, take a look at this variance, we should do something about this. In this case, you wanna use the most desaturated and light colors possible for those data series that don't matter as much, and an extremely saturated and bright color for that data series you want people to pay attention to because that's the story you're telling with your chart. And there are a couple of other tips you should keep in mind to make sure your charts are the best they can be. And the first is the squint test. If you look at your chart and squint a bit, do you still understand what it's trying to communicate? This standard design technique can be great to make sure that your chart is simple enough that even someone with no experience with the data you're looking at also knows what it's saying. Also, just because I filled my page with beautiful charts doesn't mean it doesn't still have those big tables in them that 
I was struggling to look at in the first place. So you have sort of two options here. One is that you could look at our video all about creating beautiful tables in Confluence and see if you can make this table more beautiful to look at and more useful to the team who are trying to skim through the data points. The other option is maybe you just can't make that table look any better or maybe it's just not useful to have the raw data in which case you can add an expand macro put the table in there and you can keep it under the chart or even at the bottom of the page it doesn't matter they will stay connected no matter where you put the table also if you're looking for even more advanced table visualization options check out the table filter and charts app on the Atlassian marketplace we think this option is a great one for teams trying to tell more stories with different types of charts so there are a lot of different ways to visualize your table data in Confluence and a lot of considerations to keep in mind to make sure they are as effective as they can be. But the most important thing is to make the charts that truly help your team take value out of your data and run with them so you can do something great together. And of course, this is just visualizing data in Confluence. There is so much more you can do. And at K15T, we will not leave those features uncharted. So hit that subscribe button and the bell, share this video with a teammate trying to make a beautiful chart in Confluence and join us for another video as we continue to explore how to use Confluence to share what you do best.